We're going to be talking about building an agency with search engine optimization. And this is a, a really, really important webinar really to give you because I've gotten a lot of questions. And, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people about this, about how to sell SEO. You know, is it, you know, what kind of a service? Is it really a lot of you guys that came over from, you know, Rocket Driver 2.0 and into 3.0, you know, you're looking at SEO, you have a lot of clients already, your clients are website clients, and, you know, you're looking to monetize them. And then there's a whole bunch of you who are new people, you know, who you came in or you came back or you some one way or another, you wound up in Rocket Driver and you're looking at this new SEO service and you see all the hubbub about it, you know, that we're, we're doing this thing called sales support. So there's a lot of you asking a lot of questions about it. We did a webinar recently on it, but you know, really the truth is SEO is an amazing, amazing service to found your agency upon, right? Because it has a whole bunch of real positives to it that I'm not saying other services don't have, right? Websites, certainly that's a foundational service, right? Or a flagship service. But when you're talking about why you should found your agency on search engine optimization, there's a whole bunch of really kind of very sound, good reasons. And we're going to go over them tonight. I mean, chief amongst them, dynamic fees, right? Because with SEO, you have the upfront charge and then you have the monthly charge, right? And it scales very well because it's not only with us is it a managed service, meaning we do the setup and implementation, but it's also a supported service so that we have telephone support for SEO clients. And on top of that, it's a service where you have SEO sales support to help you to close business. So there's a whole bunch of real big positives to it. And I think, you know, the two big ones sort of institutionally or structurally, right, if you want to go into some exotic terms, are that it's a recurring revenue service, right? You can build a residual income using SEO because every client that you sell, if you sell them and, you know, they get ROI, they're going to come back and they're going to pay and pay and pay and pay and pay because they're making money from it, right? It's not a cost to them anymore. When they start seeing traffic to the site going up and they start seeing leads come in and they start making money off of this service, well, you know, they're not going anywhere, right? And then, of course, the demand. SEO's demand, I know that there are people who say, oh, you know, search engine optimization, um, you know, is a service that was really reached its peak in, in 2008 or something, right? There's people who say that out there and they're, they're completely untrue. If you look at the real statistics compiled by Google, compiled by SEO Moz, compiled by any, just any agency out there that's in the business of statistics, anybody, I mean, Deloitte and Touche, you name it. Search engine optimization as a service has done nothing but grow and grow and grow. What's happened is the size of the market has outpaced the growth of the service. So it's like the marketplace today is three times the size that it was in 2008. And of course, if it's three times the size of the marketplace, you know, your search engine optimization would have to go up three times to compete. Well, it's about doubled or triple, you know, it's almost tripled. The point is, there's an enormous marketplace. When you talk about competition, competition online, guys, you remember 10, 15 years ago, when we talked about online competition, we were talking about local competition, or we were talking national or global competition, right? There, now we're talking about the competition within every small town, every village, every small area, right? Everyone's competing online. Online is just the name of the game. We no longer live in a world that's dominated by Yellow Book. So because of that, search engine optimization, organic rankings, SEO, it is really where it's at. SEO is definitely a major, major, major service. And because of that, because, you know, you can make money off of it for all the facilities that we provide you with, it's a service that you can make a lot of money with, and it makes a lot of sense to make it a flagship. Now, what we're going to cover tonight, we're going to cover a bunch of different really important topics. We're going to cover the key benefits of SEO. We're going to cover agency structure. We're going to cover recruiting reps, right? If you're going to build a sales force using SEO as its basis, we're going to cover using sales support, generating demonstrations, upselling your existing clients, because that's something I've gotten a lot of questions about. How do I approach my clients? How should I, you know, go after this? We're going to go over some tips and tricks. And of course, we're going to cover keeping clients. And then I'll make room for questions at the end. So guys, if you have questions any at any point throughout tonight's presentation, what, whatever question you have, don't be bashful. Fire away in chat, type your questions in. I will get to them at the end. 
Okay, because I've, I've heard from you guys that you feel like at the end of the presentation, you have questions, but you don't feel like, you know, you should ask them because they're dumb questions. There are no dumb questions. We have a lot of people on here. I'm Whenever you guys ask questions, there's always other people that are happy that you asked. So, you know, take the time, type them into chat. I will answer them. Now, first of all, let's go through some of the key benefits here because there are a lot of major, major benefits to search engine optimization, right? What are some of the benefits if you found your agency, if you're somebody and you're you're looking for that anchor service, right? Maybe websites have been your anchor service, first of all, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you don't have to have one flagship service, right? You know, you, you can have knife, fork, spoon. You can have multiple services that are mainstays at your agency. Don't feel like you have to pick one you know, and sacrifice another. That's not the case at all. Search engine optimization, however, is an anchor type of service, meaning that it's a service that once you've landed somebody as an SEO client, you deliver them ROI, right? You work with them, you, you get their campaign down, you get it set up right. Once that ROI begins to flow in, you can go ahead and you can sell them all the other services. If you're in version three, you sell somebody SEO, well, you're going to probably get the next website deal if you didn't already get the first one. You're going to be able to go back and sell them digital advertising, reputation management, social media management, their listings, any and every other service that makes sense for that business. You are the it company because it's an anchor, right? You're not an appendage. You're not, you know, a, a conjoined twin. You know, you're in a situation where you are the important central mainstay of that company because you're gonna bring them ROI. And that's really what it's about. And that's something to keep in mind across all the services that you sell, that once you bring a company a return on investment, you're a water walker. You're in a situation where you can go back to that business and show them, hey, you paid me X, I delivered Y. I don't cost you money, I make you money. I'm an asset to, the, your, to your business, to your organization. Now with SEO, this is a universal kind of a service. Keep that in mind. With SEO, when you go out to that business, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of a business it is. Everybody nowadays needs to rank. Lawyers, doctors, dentists, plastic surgeons, hospitals. Uh, gosh, I mean, just any business you can think of. Veterinarians, every type of school and educational institution. I mean, everybody you know, except for maybe the government, everybody wants to rank. There's no business out there that's going to say, no, you know, I don't think it's important to rank and search anymore. Nobody's going to say that. I can tell you guys for an absolute fact, 15 plus years ago, you had to explain to people, right, why it mattered if they showed up in a search. They would look at you and they'd be like, what's a search engine? Oh, Google's a search engine? What, what's that? Nowadays, nobody asks that question. They understand instantaneously exactly what you're talking about. So this is an incredibly universal service. When you go out to businesses and you go to sell them a lot of services, okay, they're going to say, well, that doesn't apply to me because I have foot traffic. I'm a foot traffic business. I'm a brick and mortar. Another business is going to say, I'm web-based. Another one's going to say, well, I work by referral or I get my, my leads through my partnerships. When it comes to you know, organic search, though, everybody is going to say, I want that, right? No one is ever going to say, I don't want it. They might say, I can't afford it, but they're never going to tell you they don't want it. So it's a universal service. It is also a very non-technical sale for that reason. With a lot of services, when you go and you sit down with somebody and you start talking about a lot of things, and I'm not even saying it's the services we have, but with a lot of services, they tend to be more technical. When you get into website personalization or you get into social media management or you get into certain, certain discussions tend towards technicality and therefore they require training. Now we give you training and you have salespeople and they get training. However, the easier the service is to sell, the easier the pitch, the better off you are. Now, when it comes to SEO, it's easy. It's do you want to rank? Do you want to improve your search rankings? When people search, do you want to get found? Very simple, kind of almost like a body heat kind of a thing. It's very, um, 
It's something people understand at a visceral level, right? They don't need a lot of technical explanation of why it matters anymore because they're all using search engines. They understand what it means to look for something and not find it, right? Now, there's also the upfront and the monthly charge. You can do both. You can do monthly, right? You can, or you can go with SEO and you can charge somebody a setup fee. Even though we're not charging a setup fee, that doesn't mean you don't have to charge a setup fee. You can make money upfront and you can make money monthly on SEO and you can, you can set up your SEO so that, you know, it's contracted in contract chunks of six months, a year, two years. You can, you can set it up however you want. You're free to set it up however it makes sense to you. Basically, SEO is a recurring revenue service. You're going to make money every single month off of your clients. And this is incredibly important. Very, very, very important. When it comes to certain services, when you talk about, um, you know, selling people a website, there's a recurring revenue component to everything, right? With websites, you have the hosting component. You can justify charging only so much per month with a service like that. And the same is kind of true with other services in the sense that there's a recurring revenue component to them, but the ROI is not something that's recurring. So it's harder to justify. It's like if, if I come to you and I tell you, you know, anybody who's on here, if I say Rich or Tom or Carl or Carlos or anybody who's here and I say to you, hey, you give me a hundred bucks this month and I'll give you 250 bucks at the end of the month, right? I could probably charge you 75 bucks and you'd probably pay it because, okay, you're, you know, you're paying me some money, right? Every month, I could probably charge you some more and make you less. But it's hard to, to justify the same exact thing when you're going to make money, you know, months down the road. With SEO, when the ROI comes in, it comes in every single month. There's an ability to charge a lot of money monthly, right? There's an ability to really hit it home there because of the ROI. Now, it's also an upsell to all existing website clients. Every one of you, I think just about, and, and I don't know every single client every one of you have. I have no idea. But I know that on this call, there are a lot of people, names I recognize from having spoken to you personally on the phone, having in, interacted with you via email, that have a lot of website clients. I know because you guys talk to me about it. Whenever we have private conversations, you talk about it. Now, if you're somebody who has a bunch of website clients, SEO is a way for you to monetize those clients. It's a way for you to go back to them. And we're gonna talk about upselling your clients later, but it's important right now. These are some of the benefits of making SEO the foundation of your agency. If you're in 3.0 and your agency's been running and you've got tons of website clients and you're looking to you know, make more money going forward, this is a way for you going forward to monetize all those existing clients. Very important point. Now, pricing of SEO is something I get a lot of questions about. And Tom, I know you're on this call. Tom's a partner here at Rocket Driver, and I just spoke to him the other night about pricing SEO with his clients and going out there and how to price it out. And it's kind of a, a discussion that we can simplify the discussion, right? We can say, okay, well, charge X percent. But that's not really the whole discussion, is it? Because when it comes to pricing SEO, there's a lot of different variables, right? The market that you're in, if you're in New York City, you're certainly going to be interacting with businesses that can pay a lot more. And, a, a, you know, to just simply make it a percentage or to upcharge based upon the hourly, it may not make, you know, all that much sense, right? It might make sense in a strict sense of the word. It, it is logical. However, you may want to charge different fees. You may want to charge a setup fee. You may want to charge a different monthly rate, uh, you know, on the campaign itself. You may say, well, you know, this client is a law firm and I'm in New York or I'm in LA or I'm in Miami or I'm in, you know, Houston, Texas or wherever, where, you know, th the law firm thinks nothing of spending $7,000 a month for a campaign, or maybe it's even, maybe it's double that. Maybe it's $14,000 a month. You find out that that's what the old company was charging for SEO. And why should you charge any less? Really, why should you? You're offering better service. You really sincerely are. Our SEO is absolutely platinum. So you have to think about what you're doing in a broader kind of a context. You are doing value-added sales, right? You're going out to businesses generally, 
and you're talking to them about delivering them ROI for money. You're talking about taking their money, converting it into profit, and feeding it back to them. So you have to think in terms of geography affecting price, the industry they're in affects the price. You're not going to charge a dog kennel the same as you're going to charge a plastic surgeon, right? And you're not going to charge, you know, a doctor the same as you're going to charge a hospital, right? Depending upon the organization you're dealing with, pricing is going to be highly variable. And because of that, it's very hard for me to say and sitting here at Rocket Driver and say, well, you know, these are the universal flat rates that should be charged across the boards because we're not selling a commodity, right? This is not a commodity. This is not, you know, potatoes or ounces of silver. This is something that has a lot of um, variability to its value based upon the context into which it's sold and to whom it's being sold to and what kind of ROI they can expect based upon their unique situation. It's all over the place, in other words. Situation affects price. The competition affects price. If you, uh, you can have two different cities, right? Identical situations, New York and LA. And in New York, there could be, you know, 20 of some type of engineer. And in LA, there's two. Well, in New York, it's going to be very different if you have 20 different competitors for a given keyword than in LA, same keyword, but there's only two at a local level. You guys understand what I'm talking about, right? This all affects price. Some people charge a setup fee. Some don't. Some don't charge a setup fee at all for SEO campaigns, right? And I'm talking broadly. Look at the industry of, of search engine optimization. Some firms, some businesses that sell SEO that are going to be competing directly with you guys, they go out there and they charge a massive setup fee. Others don't. And there's no difference at all between the service. You have to think of it in terms of taking what you can get. You have to analyze each and every individual prospect and situation. And you have to use common sense. We cannot do that for you. You're going to be in situations with it where your pricing, you know, it's on our end, and I'll talk later about this, SEO sales support is going to close the hours, right? They're going to close what you tell them to close at, right? In terms of hours and in terms of what, what they think makes sense. But you're in charge of pricing, right? These are your clients. So my advice ultimately when it comes to pricing SEO is I can't give you a dollar figure. I can't give you a percentage. What I can tell you is don't be greedy. Be wise. Use common sense and look at the unique situation into which you are sitting when you're working with that client. Charge what you can get. Think back to value-added sales, right? Think back to price drops, Think back to good old-fashioned closing, what it was like. That's what SEO is really like in the real world when you go out there and you're going to sell it. It's not something that can be, you know, commodified and boiled down to a, 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 an algorithm or an equation. It's really not. Now, let's talk about your agency structure. Building a stable agency is about planning for the future and acting in the now. And this is very much what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how and why you structure your agency, if you choose to, around SEO, what that's going to mean. Now, what you're involved in, the first thing that's really important for everybody to understand is a lot of you on this call, right, are doing this full-time. Some of you are doing it part-time. Some of you are doing something else entirely. And what you're doing is, you know, you're, you're selling these services as a side hustle or something that adds on to what you're doing. Basically, all of you are in unique situations that are unique to each of you, okay? Very, very few of you are in identical situations. And I fully mean this. If I talk to you guys, I know that each and every one of you are in different situations, circumstances, locations. It's different for everybody. So now you guys all have the same goal, right? Your goal is to build your agencies, to build your businesses up, right? To get as many clients as you can and to have as much income as possible. The first thing I think everyone needs to understand is no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing it two hours a week or 200 hours a week, you're doing the exact same thing. You're building an agency. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean when I say you're building an agency is you have these outside people, right? Your customers, your prospects, your onlookers, let's say. When they look at you and they find your website online, what they see is an agency. Doesn't matter if you look at it as your part-time thing or your side hustle or your whatever it is, you're doing the same thing. Every one of you are doing the same thing. You're engaged in the construction of a business that is ultimately an agency that has clients and it sells those clients a whole host of services in order to sustain itself and to make you profit. 
SEO is a flagship type service. It's a kind of service that when you overlap the two, when you look at, okay, you're building an agency, search engine optimization, web development, these are the kinds of services that are flagships. They're the foundational services of the agency. Yes, you have other services, business listings, for example, or social media, for example. These kinds of services, they're great. They do a really good job and you can make money selling them. However, those services are typically going to be services sold after the flagship, right? It's like if you looked at um, a restaurant chain, McDonald's, for example, what's their flagship? The hamburger, right? Fries, Cokes, all the other stuff they sell is sold in a bouquet around that, that central service. Your business, its flagship is probably going to be website and SEO, right? Those are excellent choices for flagship services. You can't be afraid of your flagship. That has to be your champion, right? You are the brand champion of your company and you're championing that central service that's going to carry you out there in the marketplace. Now, are you gonna choose to have a sales force? Maybe, you might have a sales force. You don't have to, right? A lot of you will choose not to do that. And especially a lot of you will choose not to do it right away. And that's a wise choice. If you're not ready for it, you, don't, you shouldn't do that. Will you have partnerships? Eventually, I think most of you will. Those of you who stay in this industry for any length of time, you're going to develop partnerships because it's in, it's invariable that you will. You're going to find businesses that are you're going to ally with. You're going to have partnerships with them. You're going to trade clients. Graphic design shop locally. You're going to have a client come to you and say, hey, I need a logo done. You're going to end up partnering and sending that job out of shop to somebody else. They're going to end up sending you clients back. That happens. Are you gonna sell multiple services? Of course, yes. You're going to sell multiple services. That's a given. Because those services are there to fulfill the common needs of business. They're there for a reason because we selected services that all are interconnected, interdependent. They rely upon each other and they form a cohesive structure, which is modern businesses needs, right? This is a need structure those services fulfill. Do you wanna make money? Of course. So this makes a lot of sense for you to go ahead and down the road, eventually, probably a building a sales force. So let's talk about the, the central number one thing, the steps of building a sales force start with recruiting, recruiting salespeople. This is where, believe it or not, and I've heard this many times from many of you, that recruiting people, do, doing that process is like a, like a chore, it's horrible, it's like um, peeling onions, right? I've heard that, literally that expression came from a partner. It's like peeling onions to recruit people. Oh, I hate it, I understand. However, this has gotta become part of your daily grind if you're going to build a sales force. We're equipping you with all the tools for you to be able to have a sales force, right? We're equipping you with the CRM system, the marketing automation system, the screen sharing application, all of the training, everything is there should you choose to pick it up and you know the ball's there to pick up and run with for you to go ahead and to have that sales force, to have that ability to build a sales force. It's all right there for you. So number one question, do you want a sales force? Can you handle it right now? These are two interconnected questions, right? Do you want one and can you handle one? The truth is, a lot of you guys, I think, would love to have a sales force, but if you're honest with yourself, you can't afford one right now. And I don't mean financially. Financially, you all could, because it doesn't cost anything to recruit commission-only salespeople. What I think a lot of you can't afford is the time. And if that's the case, that's perfectly fine. Do not get the idea from me that you must have a sales force to succeed, because you don't. Many, many, many partners, historically speaking, and right now have no sales force and are doing great. But if you want a sales force, you have to think in terms of what steps to take to grow that force. And that starts with recruiting, right? So basically, if you make the decision not to have salespeople because you don't have the time to train and to, to keep on top of them and to basically do the responsible thing, if you have one, you don't have to have one. But if you do, there's some steps you have to take. And that starts with recruiting. So SEO, first of all, is an ideal 
And I mean tailor-made. It's like the digital gods came out and preordained that search engine optimization is the ideal service for a sales force because there's so little complexity to it. And with Rocket Driver, with what we have, doing the closing for you, doing the setup for you, and doing the support for you, all three, it is absolutely a no-brainer that you can have salespeople sell it, that salespeople can succeed at selling it, and that you can succeed at having those salespeople sell it. There's just so little complexity there. And if you contrast the complexity of a search campaign, right, where we're going to have the closer on the phone, we're going to have the setup and implementation team call the client to do the setup. And then after that, we're going to give the client a phone number to call if they have any problems at all, they just call this number. If you look at that level of support and that lack of complexity in terms of business procedures at your on your end, if you can contrast that with just about any other service, not just from us, but in the entire sort of multiverse of services that exist, you know, in business ad infinitum, it is really, really obvious that SEO makes a hell of a lot of sense. So how do you recruit people? Well, it's pretty simple. You write a killer ad, you place the ad, you respond, and you just rinse, lather, repeat this process. That's how you build a sales force. It's not complicated. It's really, really very simple. Let's talk about writing your ad, right? Because that's where this begins. If you're going to recruit salespeople, you know, you're going to go over to like Craigslist, for example, or, you know, one of the other sites. There's a bunch of sites out there. There's a bunch of places you can go and place ads. It's so simple. And I've heard from people, oh, it's complicated. I can't write an ad. They're overthinking it. Writing an ad to recruit salespeople is incredibly, incredibly simple. You have to think of it from their perspective, right? From the perspective of the job seeker, right? They're all tuned in. They have a radio. It's tuned into one station. You guys have heard this before. W-I-I-F-N. What's in it for me, right? That's where they're tuned in. What do they want? Money. They're looking for money. They want to hear that it's easy. They want to hear that it's fast, right? And that's that's all they want to hear. And the truth is it is easy and it is fast. This isn't a job that takes a six-month internship to make your first dollar at all. And you don't have to be a tech wizard to do this either. So there's not a lot of complexity there. It is easy. It is fast. And there is money here. So how do you get that across to somebody? Now, I've written just a really basic, simple little ad, right? This is the kind of ad I would run. Now, you can take this and you can jazz this up so many ways, right? So many ways, right? Title, seeking energetic, positive SEO salespeople. That's it. Now, you could put that a lot of, you could phrase that 50 other ways. You could put money signs in there. You can put asterisks. You can make that really shine, right? So you get more people clicking on it. This is just my simple little ad. Body, hello, job seeker. New and exciting digital advertising agency is seeking hardworking, motivated, and talented salespeople to join the team selling SEO to businesses of all sizes. Telecommuting is A-OK. -okay. We offer unlimited, uncapped commissions, state-of-the-art CRM system, and the ability to leverage our in-house staff to aid in closing your deals. This is an ideal position for someone who wants to work from home and earn big, putting their sales skills to work, selling a high ROI service. 100% factual, but framed and highlighting the right things to get the person excited about giving you a response, right? Respond with your resume and contact information and we'll get in touch. That's it. Simple ad. Put that ad up on Craigslist. You will get responses. People will respond and you call them. And we've gone through recruiting in past webinars, right? It's a simple process. It's just getting on the phone. It's talking to your people, getting across to them, you know, how your business operates, what the benefit is of working with you, why they should work with your business over somebody else's. It's very, very, very straightforward. It's not complicated. Now, going forward, let's talk about how do you use sales support? What do you exactly do you do for sales support? How does that work? Well, it's extremely simple. And I have, I've even simplified it more, right? And of course, it's all there inside your partner portals. You guys can go over there to SEO. You can read right on the page, right? There's a link right there that goes through how to use sales support, but it's actually, it's very, very simple. 
Number one, you book a demo, right? You book a demo. Now you should actually talk to the business, right? You don't want to waste sales supports time. So you want to talk with the business. You want to get them qualified. And I'll talk about qualification here in a moment. But if you talk to a qualified buyer, you book a demonstration. After that, you just contact us. You contact sales at rocketdriver.com support. You say, hey, I need somebody to cop on a call with me. Here's when the call is. The call is at, you know, let's say it was four o'clock Eastern. Okay, we'll put somebody on the call. Tell us about it. You tell us, okay, well, we spoke about SEO. We spoke about, you know, uh, a $1,400 a month, six month commitment, for example. We go, okay, and we'll dispatch a closer and they will do their level best to close out that piece of business for you at $1,400 a month. Tell us the lay of the land. You just give us the cliff notes. And then what you do is, you know, the way it works in actual practice is you're there with your client, either on a phone call or elsewhere. You call up, you know, or you, you buzz in SEO sales support people and you tell them, hey, I'm on the phone here with John who's interested in hearing about our SEO. Just, you know, cluing in that person. It's really, really, really simple, right? This is not Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. This is simple stuff. Get on the phone with them. Get our salespeople involved. They will try their best to close it out. Now, let's talk about qualifying because a lot of people seem to struggle with qualification historically. And I'm not saying anyone on this call has because we've got a lot of very smart people here. And you guys have been through this, a lot of you. And I was just talking to you, Tom, about it. It's simple. You know, qualifying people is not complicated at all. What is qualification? Qualification basically is looking at an individual prospect and seeing if they could buy. Now, conditions are different than qualifications. Condition is a prospect doesn't have the money, right? That's a condition. Or, or for example, their business is bankrupt and they just filed for bankruptcy. That would be a condition, right? Qualification is whether, you know, a, a qualifier of, the, of them buying is where, you know, they may not have the money, right? You see, if somebody's qualified or disqualified, it's based upon the conditions. If somebody has money and doesn't want to buy, that's an objection. If somebody doesn't have the money and doesn't want to buy, that's a, that's a qualification or condition. So it's pretty simple, right? You want to make sure that you're talking to qualified buyers and a lot of ways to qualify. You can qualify somebody based upon the industry that they're in. For example, if I were selling stethoscopes, I'm going to guess qualifying wise that every single doctor in America can afford a stethoscope. But I'm not going to guess that every single doctor in America can afford a Bentley car, right? We're going to have to see some bank statements if I'm selling Bentleys. But if I'm selling stethoscopes, they can all afford them. You want to make sure that they meet the conditions of qualification. Usually not very hard. If you market to businesses that are generally qualified, you're going to be okay. Now, having said that, you cannot ever prejudge. Because I'll tell you, and I was just talking to somebody before this call about it, that in my career, I've dealt with business owners and people and tons of situations where you would have said, no way, no way can this business afford that much money per month. They can't float it. They probably, you know, their FICO score is higher. It has more numbers and digits in it than their bank account, right? They're screwed. And you'd walk in and you'd say, no, they're not. You'd find out that they're not. You can't prejudge. You don't know. So in certain instances, you do prejudge. In certain instances, you don't. When, it, when you do is when there's obvious qualification, right? When you have a business that's obviously qualified, right? Uh, a franchise, for example, where you know they have to have money to pay that franchise fee every month. A lawyer that, you know, runs a law firm that's prestigious and you see advertising all the time, you know they're qualified. But when you're dealing with businesses that might not be, you have to go through qualifying them. And it's really simple too. When I'm talking to a prospect and I want to make sure this prospect has the money and I want to figure it out, what, I, what do I do with them? I ask them. I tell them, hey, I just want to make sure we're not wasting each other's time. I'm setting up a demonstration with you and I'm going to bring on one of our SEO consultants. And I want to make sure that you know, you're okay with the range that we're talking about here. We're talking about a range between $1,000 and $6,000. 
Does this scare you on a monthly basis? Right? Throw it out there and hint around, fish around, figure it out. If they go, no, that's normal. That's okay. I understand. But if they go, oh my gosh, $6,000, you know, that's, that's crazy. Right? If they freak out at it, well, then you know they're not qualified. Okay. You don't know scientifically, but you know they're, the money's not there. Right? You can't be afraid to make bold statements and to really probe. Uh, did sound go down? Can you guys hear me okay? I just want to make sure. You guys hear me all right? Somebody said that uh, sound went down and I'm and, um, not coming through clear. Is it down, Carl? You, or you, can, you can hear me okay. Just want to make sure, guys. You guys can hear me all right. Yeah, okay. All right, great, great. All right. Anyhow, guys, let's talk about generating demonstrations for SEO and more. Right. Moving on from qualification. I think everybody understands that when it comes to leads and it comes to leads in this industry, you know, I've talked about a lot of venues with you guys, my own perspective. And I've done a lot of writing on this. If you go to rocketdriver.com and check out the blog, I've written a lot on different venues and how to pursue them. And I've talked a lot on different venues. I'm a huge believer in local venues for local leads, local content for local consumption, right? Um, there's a huge amount of them out there. Out there, you have everything from, you know, local trade shows, home shows, business organizations, educational organizations, associations. Um, there's just so much out there in terms of venues where you can go in, get some business cards, socialize, make partnerships, build relationships, and cultivate the kind of uh, you know, situations where you can come out on top in a big, big way without having, without spending a bunch of money, right? These are advertising venues that are free in general or very, very low cost. To attend a trade show is generally like, what, 30 bucks or less, 20 bucks or less. I mean, it's usually about the price of a movie ticket, whatever that is nowadays. And you show up and you go in, you have your cards, you get your card out there, you get it out there, what you do right? That's it. And then you go back a week later and you call everybody who was at the trade show because you collected their cards and they're all going to take your calls because they met you at the show, right? Very simple. Just about all of them will book out and become demos. If you're selling something like SEO where you can get demos with a whole bunch of businesses you know are qualified, well, in that situation now, you have a qualified person, right? You have a qualified business and you have somebody else doing the closing for you. So basically you're connecting the circuit, right? You're connecting both ends of the circuit and everything should go through and you should be just fine, right? You've got qualified people. You've got people who are willing to take your call. I think everybody on here should be doing that. Will you all do that? I hope so, because I think it's a gateway to a lot of clients that way. Now, whatever you're using, whether it's in person, whether you're cold calling on the phone, you're working via referrals and partnerships, which is something else I'm a huge believer in. Partnerships are a, a great way to land business locally and otherwise. Or you're getting inbound leads. Some of you are getting inbound leads. I and mean, there's quite a few of you here that, uh, that work on that angle and you do all right. The whole point of getting a lead with SEO is not, you don't have to fight for this, this big uphill battle at all. All you're doing is stimulating interest, right? You're talking to them about the ROI. You're telling them, listen, just hear me out. I don't want a huge amount of your time. I just need some of your time to talk to you about the type of return on investment higher organic rankings can get you. That's it. You don't have to go into deep detail. You don't have to go into esoteric facts, technical stuff, none of it. You can be very, 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 you know, suggestive, open-ended, you can talk to them about some of the things that may pertain to them, talk to them about what their competitors are doing or not doing, and tell them you get, you'll obtain value. The whole point here is that you get somebody on the phone and that when you get them, you get the lead through whatever venue, whatever means you do it, you're trying to obtain enough time for sales support on our end to be able to get on the phone, talk to that prospect and close them out. Now, I'm going to go through a few errors because there are some errors that people make here. Chief amongst them, number one error is not working hard enough. When I talk to somebody and they tell me I made five phone calls all week, you didn't work. 
You know, if I had an employee and they told me they made fine phone calls all day, I'd fire them all week. Are you kidding me? You're done. You're never going to get anywhere. If you told me you knocked five doors in a week, what, what if you told me you knocked 20 doors in a week? Well, it was some effort. One day of the week, you worked half the day. But the point is not working hard enough. Number one error. Number two error, using robotic sounding scripts, trying to replace actual human engagement with a, a, uh, a pre-recorded, method-acted, roboticized nonsense. That will never get you anywhere. Absolutely not. You have to engage with people as people, right, guys? And those of you who know me understand this. I'm big on that. You want to call me? My phone's open. If you want to email me, you can email me. I try to help you guys as a person. Imagine if you got a robotic kind of a response there. You wouldn't be happy with it, right? Nobody would. You wouldn't. You don't want to be. You don't want to be uh, talked to or handled like a robot. You're not a robot. I'm not a robotic person either. Neither are your clients, right? Neither are the people you're marketing to. So don't try it. It's not going to work. It's not going to go over well. Investing too much in the technology side. When you're talking to people, when you're engaging with somebody that doesn't know anything technical at all. Don't think that you can technology your way out of the conversation. It's not how it's going to work. You're going to have to engage with these folks. And I've, I've dealt with this. Believe me, I've made this error, right? Where I, I had all my numbers down, percentage this and, and technology that and widget this. And no, 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 no. When you're setting a demo with somebody, they're setting the demo because they like talking with you. They think they're going to obtain value. They probably don't understand all the technical stuff, but they trust you because what you're what you're doing is you're being honest with them and they can tell. That's that's my experience. That's just my honest from the gut experience of setting demos with people literally probably thousands of times. And I never set demos based on, you know, a bunch of statistical stuff. It never worked for me. Maybe it will work for some of you. Never worked for me. Poor Salesforce recruiting, right? That's a major problem. If you are recruiting a low number of people, and then you're not managing them. And usually the two go hand in hand, I notice. People who recruit very few also manage very poorly, right? The people who are like really dedicated that look at it like they are, the, like they're the mother hen of that sales force, right? Who look at it like this is their job. Those people recruit a lot and they manage a lot. They do both correctly. But if you do one bad, you're probably doing both bad. So poor sales force recruiting and management, that's going to lead to crappy demo setting because the people are out of control. They're either out of control or not working at all or both, right? Very little of either. Ignoring fundamentals, right? Not understanding the basic stuff, you know, just not no, not applying fundamental stuff, overthinking the process. I see a lot of that, a lot of people thinking that this process has to be complicated. When it comes to SEO, the process could not be more simple. You could literally call up the business, tell them a joke and get them laughing, and then book out an hour of their time. And if they, they go with it just on pure charisma that they like you, you're statistically in the same position as everybody else that you're going to have a 33% chance of spinning the wheel and getting a deal because the closing and the pitching is being done by somebody else that does this for a full-time job 24-7. Prejudging, incorrectly qualifying, right? Pitching people who, you know, you didn't talk to long enough. You have no idea what's going on. Don't do any of this stuff, right? Make sure if you're going to go on, you're going to have a demo, you're going to pull in sales support, make sure it's a qualified customer. And I'm not scaring you from using it. I want you guys to work them, work sales support until they scream at me for a pay raise. Please use their time, but use the time productively. Get yourself sales. I want each and every one of you to make a lot of money. Guys, get out there, sell like crazy. Utilize sales support. Make sure you're utilizing it correctly, right? Don't prejudge leads to be bad. Don't prejudge them to be good. Just go qualify correctly. Talk to them. See if they can afford the kind of service that we're selling. Get in there. You're going to make money. It's that simple. Now, upselling. Last topic of the evening here is upselling. A lot of you who are on this call already have a lot of clients, right? If you have clients already, upselling them is incredibly easy, right? If you've sold somebody websites, it's no big deal to call them up and say, hey, 
I sold you a site a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, whenever. Now it's time to get that site ranking. Let's give it an overhaul. Let's fix it up. Let's get it ranking, right? Think about this. How many of these people, right? Go through this. You already have clients, just about all of you, right? Which one of them doesn't want to rank? I've heard you guys say they're scared of, of calling the old clients. Absolutely not one of those clients doesn't want to rank. They all want to rank. They're all going to take your call. They're all going to go through a demo. 33% of them are going to turn into a monthly payment. Problem with an average about is about, and on average, if you were to really, really look at this with cold hard facts, you know, your average that you're getting per monthly on SEO in terms of profit is probably like the same as a, a lease on a on a three series BMW or something like that, right? It's probably like three, four hundred bucks, right? Somewhere in that range. Profit, I'm saying, for that campaign. So there's real money there. Uh, and, and on the absolute lowest end, and it all goes up from there because since you already sold them sites, if they're happy with them, a lot of you guys have sold a lot of businesses that have huge, huge upside potential. You can make a lot of money off your existing client bases. So you should. And it's so simple, right? Contact support, you know, book a demo with your existing client, contact support, get somebody on the call with you and close them out. Trust creates sales. Now, a lot of people ask what services make sense. When we talk about upselling, we're not just talking about SEO. We are talking about other things because I know this from experience. You get into upselling, and that's why I put this slide here because you're going to get into situations where when you go to upsell people, maybe what makes sense, maybe your client was an auto, auto dealership. I was just talking to somebody about them. Uh, and it might make sense to sell them digital advertising. Another one, it might be, you know, a restaurant and social media management might make sense or reputation management might make sense. You have to look at upselling and whatever service makes sense from the perspective that's very much through the lens and prism of what makes sense for that specific business. Not just the industry, but the industry has a big bearing on it, right? Like it wouldn't make sense, for example, to go into a business that, you know, like, like an electrician, for example, social media management for an electrician probably doesn't make much sense. Business listings makes eminent sense, right? You have to look at every single key factor. You study the services, you learn exactly what they do, and you come out on top. Now, guys, just a few last things here. Few things. I told you guys a couple webinars ago to develop a plan for yourself. Have something to look at that says, this is what I'm going to do. Have your plan and follow it. Listen to everyone, but follow your own instincts. Very important. Follow what you see works right for you, what makes sense for you. Work smart and hard, right? It's kind of common sense, but you know, you always hear people say, oh, I work, I work smart, not hard. Well, why not do both and get yourself really ahead? Upsell every client that you've got. You have clients, you fought tooth and nail for that client list. Upsell them the services that you now have if you're in version three. Lots of you are in version three, have lots of clients. You can go out there, capitalize upon them, sell them new services, absolutely never give up. I'm gonna take questions at this time. Actually, I've got one last slide here to talk about keeping clients. As I've gotten some questions on this, really, really simple, guys. You want to keep your clients. You want to call and check in routinely. You want to show them that you're delivering them value, that you care. You want to basically stay a presence in their life. It's really not that complicated. You have to show ROI on the services that you've got and make sure everything is going okay. And, you know, don't assume anything. Thank you, Carl. You're very welcome. Uh, everybody's welcome. Thank you guys for coming on tonight's webinar. We're going to wrap up here, but it was wonderful speaking with all of you. I look forward to next week's presentation. Have a great weekend. Thank you guys.